Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. Imagine a family of four, a husband, a wife, and their two young children. Both of the parents work, but together they bring in about $50,000 a year. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, they earn too much to meet the federal poverty guidelines. The couple would have to make $20,000 less to fall below the poverty line and receive certain benefits like health insurance, food stamps, and tax credits. These outdated thresholds make life harder for millions of Americans who still need assistance, especially at a time when everything from food to rent to child care keeps getting more expensive. With little to no help available, it can be all too easy for these families to fall into debt and feel perpetually stuck. That's where a movement like United for Alice comes in. So Alice is somebody that we all know, but perhaps not by name. Alice is an acronym, Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. And the precise definition is households that earn above the federal poverty level, but not enough to afford a basic household survival budget in the communities where they live. That's Stephanie Hoops, the national director of United for Alice, a research organization that uses data to paint a clearer picture on financial hardship in America. With rising prices and stagnating wages, Hoops says that current federal poverty guidelines are far too low and don't factor in how cost of living can vary from state to state. In 2021, data from United for Alice showed that more than 52 million U.S. families struggled to afford key basics like rent, food, gas, and more. A large chunk of these are adults who earn above the federal poverty threshold but still can't make ends meet. Add on top of this, the pandemic only worsened this situation, especially for minority groups. 59% of Black households and 51% of Hispanic households could not make ends meet in 2021. That's compared to 36% of white households. So we're seeing this gap by race and ethnicity sustain and in some cases even increase during the pandemic. In 2021, looking at more than 126 million households in the U.S., nearly 30 percent fell into the category of Alice, where families earned more than the federal poverty level but not enough to afford the basic cost of living in their area. Hoop says that this group spans all demographics. It's the young salesperson working full-time, or the middle-aged woman who waitresses during the day and takes classes online at night. It's the senior couple down the street who live on a fixed retirement income. Another one of these people is a mother named Sherry from New Jersey. For this story, she's chosen to use only her first name to protect her identity. For eight years, I lived in this very small apartment. I love that apartment, but it was my husband, myself, and I have a Shih Tzu. And I had my son, and I realized I needed more space. And I, for almost a year, was looking for a house. And slowly, reality set in. I couldn't afford the houses in Somerset County. So I started with my, at that time, my income was pretty low. I think I was earning maybe 30000 and I couldn't afford any houses that had a backyard in that budget. So I started expanding, and I started moving this way towards the Phillipsburg area. And the only reason I even got this house was we came and met the owner the day she put this on the market, and she saw me with my kids. She saw me with my baby and she had other offers and she said, no, I want the family with the baby to get the house. And that's the only reason I was even able to. We drove out of our way to come see her. And I'm so thankful it was my husband's idea that we did that because otherwise, if we had not gotten this house, we would not have, I don't think, gotten a house. We would still be in that one bedroom apartment. Three months after Sherry finally found a house and closed on the sale, the pandemic started and created another challenge. 
I tried to save up as much as I could for that down payment to have the lowest possible payment. My credit wasn't that great. So I ended up having to put that mortgage insurance on and it was tough, especially when the pandemic hit, because then my husband, he's a photographer. He depends on parties and events. And when it closed, you know, our budget was thrown way off. During the height of COVID, when everyone was home, she used this time to build on her associate degree and get a bachelor's in finance. This allowed her to get a job in insurance where she's able to earn more and work from home full time. However, finances are still tight. And as a mom to two toddlers, she says that rising prices continue to cut into the family's disposable income. For Mother's Day, we had to be very intentional with where we were going to go. Instead of going out to, say, like a place where we have to pay, like Crayola World, we went to the park and we were playing with bubbles. So trying to make memories with my kids, but also being as frugal as possible. And that's kind of been my experience right now is trying to be frugal, but still trying to keep my kids entertained. One big help to Sherry's family has been child care assistance through United in Care, a nonprofit partner that increases access to affordable, quality child care. United in Care is a pilot project that was funded in part thanks to the data and research compiled by United for Alice. Sherry believes that it's these programs and people who really make all the difference. Alice helped me so much, like not just with the economic help, but like just feeling like there are good people and inspiring me to use my insurance coverage to look for help, to not feel alone. And I'm so thankful because I feel so much better now. Like as a mom, as just a person, like if I ever have a mom that needs help or is just feeling down, like in a heartbeat, I will always refer her to social services, social work, nor West have always asking for help because I went through it. It was the best thing I could have done. Hoops says that nonprofit organizations and social workers play a vital role, but are just one part of the solution when it comes to helping those in need. We have the structural problem in our communities, in our economy, between wages and the cost of living. So there needs to be some bigger, high-level policy work that tackles that, that works to raise wages for those low-wage workers and or bring down the cost of living. And we've got some great partners from state governments to companies, foundations that are really looking hard at this big picture. And there are some very creative solutions from policy initiatives that take into account Alice needing a regular source of income to help with sometimes it's fluctuating wages. You know, a lot of those retail sales workers, they don't work 40 hours every week. They work 50 hours some week, and then some other weeks they work half that. So how do you smooth out that kind of income? How do you keep down those costs? There's a lot of good rental support programs out there, but clearly not enough. So if you're listening and need help, Hoops recommends calling 211 or heading to 211.org. 211 is a resource and referral service that works to connect Americans with local nonprofits and providers in their area. Also, head to unitedforalice.org to find out more about the organization and dig deeper into the data. To learn more about this topic and our guests, Stephanie Hoops and Sherry, visit viewpointsradio.org. This story was written by our executive producer, Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Gary Price. Coming up on Viewpoints. They have evolved to be able to interact with us in ways that they can tell us, I'm hungry or I want to get out of this room. Understanding the evolution of the furry felines we love. Then... They're not on the radar screen of teachers and parents because they're more dreamy. They seem oftentimes to get not in trouble as much. Gaining a better understanding of ADHD. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. 
follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Viewpoints.